Hello there, welcome along to our latest look at the WeatherQuest farming forecast. Of course, it's a busy time of the year. Uh, a lot of things going on outside, haymaking for example, also the beginning of the harvest as well. So uh, the weather is crucial at this time of the year as to the sorts of activities uh, that can be done efficiently outside at least. So let's take a look, let's jump straight into what's going on right now. This is the jet stream pattern this week. Needless to say, the next couple of days are looking quite unsettled. We've got this jet stream right across the UK, straight lined west east, that's what we call a zonal jet if you like. And that is bringing some outbreaks of rain, low pressure close by and therefore it's going to be quite wet I think through this middle period uh, of the week. As I run this animation forward over the next few days you'll notice the jet initially relatively weak but actually as we get towards Thursday Friday uh, brighter colours start appearing in the jet so it is strengthening and it's also developing more of this dip that's what we call a trough and that can spin up areas of low pressure but then by the weekend as that clears off to the east notice the jet uh, easing away, lifting to the north, weakening quite a bit and actually that will allow high pressure to build in so things will settle down by the weekend but until then several days with low pressure dominating and, and therefore the risk of some rain and showers uh, and so forth until the end of this work week. Uh, not least complicated somewhat by the remnants of tropical storms at the moment we're looking at tropical storm Edward. this is the position of the storm on Tuesday well over in the mid-Atlantic not really affecting anyone directly but uh, you'll notice it's on the back edge of a whole string of uh, pulses of rain running in from the Atlantic. So this is the situation, as I say, on Tuesday with the rain pushing in across England and Wales primarily. But notice it stretches all the way back out over the Atlantic, uh, tied back into the uh, remnant of the ex-tropical storm. So a lot of humid air coming in over the next few days with this uh, feature, ex-tropical air coming in. Uh, and so the potential for quite a bit of rain in places, especially on western hills where that moisture gets forced upwards uh, by the mountains of Wales, for example, whereas further east amounts of rain may be somewhat lower. And whenever we get these tropical storms in the forecast, they are uh, they always add a bit of extra uncertainty into how things may evolve. And that's certainly the case this week, trying to nail down the exact detail about where these areas of low pressure are going to go, how deep they'll be, and therefore uh, how much rain they'll bring as well. But we'll take it day by day and we'll start off midweek on Wednesday and as you can see again not a great deal of change from Tuesday it's much of England and Wales rather cloudy humid and damp with some outbreaks of rain again most of it light and patchy during daylight hours but it may turn a bit heavier again uh, later in the afternoon and into the evening from the west across Scotland very similar story to Tuesday we're dealing with sunny spells but also a few scattered heavy showers developing uh, into the afternoon and as we go through Wednesday night to Thursday here comes Edward so that area of low pressure pushing across Ireland and ahead of it we'll see pulses of rain working their way eastwards and so again it's not that heavy but by the time we get to Thursday daytime again it turns back to sort of light patchy rain and drizzle in many places still some heavy bursts but overall the extent of the rain becoming a bit more sort of patchy in nature as I say very humid air very high dew point air so you'll notice that a lot of low cloud over the hills quite misty and murky uh, in general and again across Scotland it's a case of sunny spells and showers so much of this week Scotland poking out to the north of all of this activity and keeping the uh, sunny spells and showers thing going but by Thursday some of these could be quite heavy with some thunder uh, mixed in as well. Now remember that jet stream I showed you a moment ago and how it intensifies a bit more through Thursday Friday as it develops that trough. Now on the leading edge of that it may pick up the remnants of Edward which is the area of low pressure here across England and it perhaps could deepen that low as it's clearing the east coast later on Thursday into Thursday night. Now if that happens there are two things that could happen here. One, the winds will pick up on the back side of that low and the second thing is the rain may turn heavier and more widespread potentially on the wraparound occlusion over parts of eastern England. So that's something to keep in mind. Notice the number of isobars increasing on that low as it clears away from eastern England uh, and some tightening isobars as well giving us some stronger northwesterly winds Thursday night and into Friday but by Friday daytime most of that is out, out of the way and we're back to where we were really on Monday with uh, quite a brisk northwesterly wind bringing cooler air southwards it'll bring showers especially across eastern parts of the UK uh, but also quite a brisk wind so if you're trying to do spraying for example on Friday because things are drying out across the southwest it may still be a bit too windy potentially but we'll have to see a little bit nearer time as to how quickly the winds will ease down because they will by the end of the week uh, by the looks of things. So that's everything clearing to the east. If we look to the west, high pressure building in from the Azores and that's likely to be the theme as we go into the weekend. So much of the weekend for many parts of the British Isles will be dry, fairly settled, light winds, some sunshine but also quite a bit of cloud at times coming in from the Atlantic. So not promising it'll be wall-to-wall -wall sunshine, uh, there could be cloud coming and going through the weekend but overall a lot of dry weather 
good for spraying because the winds will be light for many of us. Now there's always uh, some places that don't quite fit that rule and that in this case will be northwestern parts of the UK. You can see that low pressure just south of Iceland there and that could push some cloud and a little bit of rain into perhaps Northern Ireland and Western Scotland here a bit more in the way of breeze as well. A bit of uncertainty about how far south that may get. Um, but uh, yeah, here there'll be more chance for more cloud and some occasional outbreaks of rain. But many other areas though will have probably quite a dry weekend coming up, which uh, is a stark contrast to many of the previous weekends, which have often been dominated uh, by low pressure over the last sort of five, five, six weeks or so. So that's how things look towards the end of this week. In terms of rainfall amounts, I'd say there's a lot of variation depending on how things play out. As I said, a lot of uncertainty. And with uncertainty, we like to look at ensemble forecasting. Uh, and this is from our 50 member ensemble. Uh, so basically we've run the same computer model 50 times, changed the starting conditions just very slightly to cater for any error that may be there at the beginning of the forecast to see if that has any impact on the forecast going forward in time. And if they're all close together throughout the forecast period, then confidence is high of a certain event happening. And if there's a lot of spread, then confidence is low and there's a lot of uncertainty. And that's what we're dealing with for the next few days. You can see in these two tables here, the uh, chance of rain at Oxford, for example, on the left and Middlesbrough there on the right, uh, the amount of rain falling in the 24 hours that make up each of these days going along the top there. And you can clearly see there's a good signal for rain uh, at Oxford on Wednesday and Thursday at least, and then things look like they tail off Friday into the weekend. Uh, but exactly how much rain is the uncertainty as well. The spread could be anywhere between sort of half a mil to maybe as much as 20 to 30 mil looking at some of these uh, bands here, but many of the members cluster on Wednesday, for example, in that 5 to 10 mil range, and on Thursday also in that 5 to 10 mil range as well. So it's possible in Oxford, for example, you may get anywhere between 10 and 20 mil on Wednesday and Thursday combined uh, before things then tail off and dry out Friday into the weekend. Now, Middlesbrough further east and actually further north, there may not be quite so much rain here perhaps during the middle part of the week, but as that low clears Thursday into Friday, uh, and as I say, the, the low may deepen and the rain could turn heavier across each, some parts of eastern England Thursday night. Then here, notice there's much larger spread on Friday. It could be as much as 40 to 50 millimetres of rain, potentially. It's a low risk, only a 2% chance uh, of that coming off at the moment. But it is something to bear in mind. You can see just how big the spread is on Friday in particular in Middlesbrough. Uh, with this event happening Thursday night into Friday morning before the showers kick in in the afternoon. So a lot of spread, a lot of uncertainty, and no doubt the forecast details, site-specific detail, will probably change quite a bit over the next couple of days or so as we go through uh, these several sort of waves of rain coming in uh, off the Atlantic. Either way, both of these places have a signal there, quite a strong signal for dry weather or drier conditions as we go into the weekend. They both drop off to the very low values there. Uh, and generally speaking, on Sunday at least, they're all clustering in the less than 0.5 millimetre range. In other words, it should be a dry day uh, on Sunday and probably Saturday as well by the looks of things. So to keep on top of all this uncertainty, one of the ways you can keep up to date with that is to log into your WeatherQuest portal. And on there you can see those probability tables for your farm and for your part of the UK. Uh, and you can look at other variables as well, not just rain, but also temperature, wind, sunshine and so forth. And there's many other things available on the portal as well, such as detailed seven day forecasts, jet stream maps and images with forecaster commentary. So you can track the weather uh, detail and, and events crossing the Atlantic and over the UK, areas of low and high pressure and so forth. And of course you can get a more detailed monthly forecast for the UK and Europe on there as well. We offer a free two week trial, we always do. So if you're interested in having a look and seeing what might be an offer for you on the WeatherQuest portal, then by all means, just send us an email to info at weatherquest.co.uk and we'll set you up with a free two week trial and you can see how things are looking over the next few weeks or so. So closer to home as we head through into the beginning of next week, and uh, it looks like that high pressure which will have built in over the weekend will still be there at the beginning of next week, so sort of Monday time, I guess. Uh, with that high pressure there. This is sometime around the 13th of July or so. Low pressure to the northwest, so still that risk in parts of Scotland, Northern Ireland in particular, of seeing some rain, breezier conditions, more cloud. But further south, much of England and Wales still relatively settled at this stage. Now it does look like, which we've seen through this week at the moment, that that high will retreat back to the Azores as we head through the, the middle part of July, or the middle part of next week, so mid-month basically. And as that happens, it allows those areas of low pressure and fronts over the northwest to sink a bit further south. Now, the question mark is how far south? 
And that was very similar to, to the story this week as well. So in general, the further south and southeast you are, the more likely it is you are to hold on to drier conditions for longer through next week. Whereas the further north and west you go, the greater the risk of some rain. But I wouldn't want to necessarily rule out completely getting the odd weak front coming even into the southeast, but the risk here is much lower than areas further northwest. So I appreciate a lot of people are trying to make hay. Um, and ideally, I guess you could cut perhaps on Saturday, but the question mark is, will you get five dry consecutive days? Well, I think in the southeast, relatively good agreement that you could well get five dry days there, but the further northwest you go, the, uh, the risk is a little bit more sketchy, I guess. Uh, depending on how things play out next week. But just bear in mind, although it is at the moment looking like it is ridged, there's always these caveats that some of these fronts could just nudge a bit further south. I don't think they'll necessarily bring a lot of rain because they are running into high pressure, but it could be a little bit of rain here and there. And if you're in Western Scotland, it does look quite wet at times through next week with various fronts coming in uh, off the Atlantic. Uh, later in the week, that high may reposition itself such we could see some thundery showers coming up from the south, from France and into south and southwestern parts of the UK. A lot of uncertainty, uh, but it does look like things could warm up during the second half of next week, and that in turn then could bring uh, some thundery showers with it as well. So here's a look at our dry days. We've used this table before on the uh, farming forecast. You can see uh, a lot of green there showing up on the uh, left-hand few columns. That's this week's unsettled weather. The browns then showing up for next week, implying drier than normal, or dry conditions really, uh, for much of uh, the weekend and on into next week, although the northern half of the UK, as you can see there, still in the greens. So parts of Scotland, for example, staying in the greens uh, through much of the next four weeks or so, whereas further south there's quite a bit of dry weather on offer. And then there does seem to be a trend later on towards uh, the last week of July onwards that things could turn more widely uh, unsettled. But until then, reasonable amount of dry weather, but there will be the odd slightly wetter, wetter phase coming through from time to time, but a bit of uncertainty about exactly when and where. So this is looking at Bedford, just to nail down some of the detail, looking at the maximum temperature on the top graph there, or top table, and on the bottom there is the mean wind speed each day. And you can see there is this gradual increase in temperature as we go through the weekend and into next week. So we are expecting temperatures to rise a bit through the weekend, and more especially into next week. Uh, and towards the end of next week, it could actually turn quite warm again, perhaps into the high 20s, perhaps even nudging close to 30, we'll have to see, but it will be uh, warming up once again through the week by the looks of things. For spraying potential, you can see it does turn quite windy on Friday. Again, a lot of spread because of the uncertainty about how deep that load gets. Uh, but Friday could well be quite windy. And then after that, with the high building in, those winds really drop out. So it should be uh, much calmer conditions really through the weekend and into next week. But as the high weakens, the breeze might pick up a little bit more. And so we may see the winds starting to pick up again later on into uh, next week. This is how things are looking across Europe. Uh, through next week, so the 13th through to the 19th of July, high pressure close to the UK. The red colours there indicating higher than normal pressure, but remember it will be retreating to the southwest as we go through the week, allowing things to topple in uh, around the northern edge of it. And it means the northwest will stay near normal temperature wise of the UK, but towards the southeast we should see some slightly warmer conditions developing up from the south later on. And that's also reflected across Western Europe there, whereas Eastern Europe is looking pretty cool for the time of the year. And here we will see some rain or showers at times, whereas closer to the high pressure across Western Europe in particular, then it is looking quite dry, drier than average. Whereas Western Scotland is closer to normal for the time of the year. On into the following week, and uh, still a hint of higher than normal pressure over the UK. Doesn't necessarily mean high pressure dominating, but it just means the low pressure is perhaps not quite so frequent or as deep as they usually are at this time of the year. Now, right now there's no sign, no strong signal, I should say, of any major heat wave or anything like that showing up. Temperatures, generally speaking, near normal. That doesn't mean we won't see the odd slightly hotter day, but overall no prolonged hot spell showing up uh, at this stage. And the rainfall anomalies still near or even below average across the UK and indeed Western Europe, whereas Eastern areas are uh, somewhat above average. And then for the final week of July, into the very beginning of August, you can see the blue shading there indicating lower than normal pressure starting to come back in. And this just marks that change. There's a hint in the longer range forecast that things may turn a bit more unsettled towards the very end of July into early August. Near normal temperatures showing for the UK at the moment. And again, rainfall starting to come back up above average across many parts of the UK. Still four weeks away, still could change, but that's how things are looking right now. So a fair amount of dry weather for the next couple of weeks, but then towards the end of July, it may turn more and settle more widely 
uh, once again. We'll have to see. But in the meantime, in, in summary, uh, it, it is looking quite cloudy with some rain at times for the rest of this week and then gradually turning more showery on Friday as that all clears away uh, to the east. And then for the weekend, high pressure builds in. So things are looking much drier, more settled through the weekend away from the far northwest. And that could hang on into southern parts of the UK on and off through most of next week with just the odd weak front perhaps trying at times to come further south. But as I say, a bit of uncertainty about how far south those fronts will get and how active they will be when they do get uh, any further south. And then perhaps a growing sign towards the weekend of maybe some showers coming up from the south, but equally still maintaining that more unsettled flavour towards the northwest of the UK. So overall, there may be a slightly higher chance of catching some showers late next week into next weekend. Uh, but on balance, I still think there'll be a reasonable amount of dry weather prevailing into the following week. The question is, will you get many consecutive dry days or will there be, say, for example, three dry days and then a wet day and then two other dry days? That's the the tricky bit to nail down at this early stage. So some signs to be cheerful if you're trying to make hay. Certainly either this weekend into the early part of next week there could be potential, especially in the southern parts of the UK. Uh, as ever, keep up to date with the latest day-by-day -day forecast by following us on social media. Thanks for listening.